This is the second day that Jesus is teaching about the kingdom of heaven in parables. If you remember last Sunday, it was the parable of the sower and the seed and the different type of soils. And while these parables teach us about the kingdom of heaven, but they also teach us about how sometimes people, the obstacles some people have to become citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Last time, the seed, which is the word of God, if we don't have the right understanding of what the Bible is and how the Bible came about, a lot of times that becomes an obstacle. One example, a lot of the young people today, they say, well, science and faith are not compatible. Look at the story of creation. We know the world is much older than what the Bible says. And that's true, because the Bible is not a science book. It's not a history book. The Bible wasn't written at one point by one person. The Bible is an inspiration inspired by God, and it's about God and re God's relationship with his people. It's how God relates to us, who is God, and what God is trying to teach us. It's about faith. We don't believe as Catholics that the word was created, like it says in the story of creation, because that's a fictional story inspired to teach us some important truth, the truth that God was the source of creation. Whether it's the Big Bang Theory or whatever theory we discovered later, it has to start with something. And that something, whether it's gases, whether it's atoms, molecules, neutrons, whatever it is, came from God. And then, yes, it could be through the Big Bang Theory. It could be through any other theory we discover in the future. The inspiration or the inspired part of the story is to teach us that God also created everything, and everything God created is good, including you and I. We're created in God's image, and we are good. That's what the purpose of the story, not how the world evolved over the thousands or millions of years. Let's look at today's gospel. The first parable is about how come there is wheat and wheat in the field when the owner sowed good seed. And that addresses a question that's been boggling people's mind all the way, you know, thousands and thousands of years. Even the whole book of Job in the Old Testament is to address this question, why good people suffer, why there is evil in the world. And the argument goes that we Christians claim that God is all good. Well, if God is all good, then why is there evil happening? And we say God is all-powerful. Well, if he is all good and all-powerful, why doesn't he put a stop to evil? Why doesn't he do something about it? And Jesus tells us through this gospel that we're forgetting one thing in this analysis, in this way of thinking. We have free will. Remember, we're created in God's image. We are good. We have the choice, the freedom to make our own choices. When we choose to do selfish things, somebody's got to get hurt. Sometimes it's us. But God never wills evil. God never wills anyone to suffer, whether to teach them a lesson or so they can become a better person. God, who's all good, cannot will something against his nature. And suffering is never good. And God doesn't will it on others. And we have to be careful because sometimes when we're talking to people who are suffering, we say, well, it's God's will. No, it's never God's will but because we have that freedom to choose, and when we make the, right, the wrong choices, there's consequences. And that's why there is evil in the world. That's why there is suffering. Innocent people suffer. And that's why God allows it. He allows it for now, because unlike the wheat and the weeds, we can't, they can't change who they are, we can change. God is patient with us. God is a God of hope that he hopes and believes that freely that one day we can change from being like, weed, like weeds to become like the wheat. But the end, there will be a judgment. The other thing sometimes we think about, well, okay, fine, that explains, you know, things like 
consequences of people's selfishness. But what about like earthquakes and floods that killed hundreds and thousands of people? Why does God allow those to happen? Well, remember again, going to the story of creation in the beginning when God created the world, there was perfect harmony and peace between animals, plants, and Adam and Eve. They walked with God, they talked to God. None of that was there. But then when they disobeyed God, when the human race began to disobey God, all of creation fell from the state of grace. It has impact on everything, even on the, create, on the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom. For example, today with our environment, what we do, how much we waste, how much we use plastic, that impacts the whole environment, the, the world. So our sins sometimes, our selfishness, impacts the whole universe, not just ourselves, not just people, because it's all part of God's creation and all it is good. And God asked us to be good stewards of that creation. But when we abuse it for our own, you know, comfort, for our own benefit, it impacts everything and everyone, everywhere. Another thing that this parable tells us sometimes people has, you know, is an obstacle for them is, why would I join a church that's imperfect, that has all these scandals, whether it's the Catholic church or any religion, any church? Because that's how the kingdom of heaven is. It's where the weed grows with the wheat. It's not a perfect, it's a club for perfect people, because then nobody will be in it. God gives us this opportunity to be transformed, to be changed. God needs the, those who are more like the wheat to be the instruments to convert the weeds, to give them an opportunity to change, to be transformed. It's not a club for the perfect. Look at Jesus. I mean, in his 12, he had wheat and he had one weed, Judas. And yet he called them all together. In the kingdom, we're called to be patient with others, understanding, not judgmental, and condemning others because they're not as good as we are. It's our role to help them to grow in holiness and closer to God. The kingdom of heaven is made of wheat and weeds, and we should thank God for that. The second parable about the yeast and the, sorry, the seed, the mustard seed, how it's being so small and yet grows to be a big bush. Again, a lot of times people say, well, why would I join any church when people are leaving the church? You know, they're dying. Pretty soon there'll be nobody going to church. It's not about the numbers. It's about the quality of those who are in the church. It's about you, have to, you don't have to be too big, but you can be as small as a, as a mustard seed to produce a great bush, a great tree. And that again gives us hope. Sometimes we feel like we're almost losing the battle. Jesus says, no, that's the way in the kingdom. It's not about how big things are. Actually, the more big things get, the more troubles you have. Look at Jesus. He started with 12 men, 11, some women, some other disciples, and look how they changed the world. That's how is it in the kingdom. Each one of us can contribute to building this kingdom. Each one of us can make a big difference. We can say, oh, what can I do? I'm just one person. Sometimes all it takes is that one person. Look at the lives of the saints. Every one of us can be a saint, have the potential to be a saint. And we can make the same difference they are if we remain faithful to the word of God and to Jesus. The parable of the yeast. This is the only parable in the Gospel of Matthew where he has a woman kind of representing God in his parable. And again, what Jesus is telling us, women at the time of Jesus didn't have a high position in society. He's telling us, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're male or female, rich or poor, young or old, God chooses the lowly, the humble, those who are willing to do the work of God. And through the help of the Holy Spirit, 
represented by the yeast, they can make a great bread for people to eat. Again, we're called to give of ourselves to others, just like the mustard seed, it grows so birds can come and nest in it and eat from it. It's not for ourselves. The kingdom of heaven of those people who realize it's not about me. It's about how can I use the gifts that God has given me to benefit everyone else. That's how we grow. That's how the early Christian community grew. Because people were looking at the Christians and say, look how much they love each other, look how kind they are, how generous they are, how much they give of themselves. That's what the kingdom of heaven is all about. That's what Jesus is inviting us to, to say yes, to live according to the values of that kingdom. Next Sunday, Jesus will continue to teach us about the kingdom of heaven. So take some time and pray about this week, about, you know, last Sunday's gospel, this Sunday's gospel. Pray about next Sunday, read the gospel, and see what's God inviting you to. How is God calling you to grow, to become a citizen of that kingdom, and to reveal all that was hidden so more people can join God's heaven?